Hey everybody, this is Dan. Just wanted to run a couple of things by you. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and Google a lot of things when I have uh, questions about how to do something in software. I've been using Cakewalk for many years, probably 25 years. Uh, that's a long time. And I still have to go to the manual to look up things sometimes. It's awesome to be able to go to YouTube, type in your search criteria, and basically find out how to use everything. Great sources. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube to do that. However, I've noticed there's a couple of things that nobody ever talks about that I kind of wanted to bring up today just to be a time saver because if it ever comes up, you can't find it. At least I haven't been able to. So two things, uh, in Cakewalk especially, um, I pulled up a file here and I wanted to just kind of show you some of the, the issues that can come up. Sometimes your keyboard can get bumped or something falls on it and a button gets hit and it changes everything on the screen and then it's impossible to know how to get it back. One of the things I've had several years ago and it took me literally all day to figure out how to get it back was my timeline my my mouse when i when i cross over the the track scene i couldn't just get an individual thing all of a sudden i had this well let me just click on it i would have this line here and i'm like ah oh, what is that the thing is irritating i can't use that it really gets in my way it drives me crazy and it took me all day to figure it out. I was trying to figure out what it was. Looked all over the manual, all over Google, YouTube, and could not find anybody that would just say, do this. I did find it, but I don't remember where. But anyway, all that is is X, the letter X on your keyboard. If that gets bumped, it'll toggle it back and forth. So I'm clicking on X right now, and you see how it goes on and off. Sometimes you may want that to get specific timing. It's real convenient for that, but it's really irritating when you're editing, trying to get in close to something. So anyway, it's X. The other one, the more irritating one that I wanted to bring up, that I always have trouble with remembering what it is, and it's this. Whenever you're using a timeline, I like to have it so that it's always following the track. So if I'm playing a song here, hopefully you can still hear me, then you can keep track of where you are on the song. I also like to set it so that when I stop, it doesn't rewind, it just stays where I stopped. So that's my preference. But say I'm editing in, in a place here on my song, and I get done with it, I want to back up to the beginning. If I have, I've had this happen where I'll have this button gets hit, and I go to hit rewind, and the screen doesn't follow my my marker so even when I hit play so that I just hit play and it's not showing on the screen that's really irritating and it took again forever to figure out what did I hit to cause this to do this and I finally figured out it's the scroll lock button on your button on your keyboard this is a Windows system I'm using so but the scroll lock, if I hit scroll lock on again and hit rewind, it's going to back it up and it'll follow it. So watch how it refreshes when it passes the screen. It stays with it. It stays right there. But if it's turned off, I'll turn it off now. It'll just keep going and won't follow it. So irritating. See how it just stays there? So anyway, that's how you quickly fix it. It's the scroll lock button. Right next to, on my keyboard, right next to the print screen button or pause break. It's usually at the top right of the keyboard. Uh, but it's scroll lock is a, is a shortcut. So hopefully, if you're looking through YouTube trying to find out how do you fix that, that's how you fix it. Take care. Hope that helps.